Welcome to this edition of Editor's Notebook. My name is Mark O'Keefe. I'm the editorial page editor for the Herald Standard. With us today is Jim Davis. Jim is the newly elected chairman of the Fayette County Democratic Party. I want to thank you very much, uh, Jim, for, for coming on the show. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people probably probably ask you, you know, what, uh, what, what prompted you to uh, take this. Uh, Certainly, uh, you're one of the uh, more successful attorneys here in town. You and your brother, Sam, have the uh, very successful Davis & Davis law firm. You have a son, I believe, uh, Jeremy, and, and daughter that, that are also part of your, your law firm. So kind of at an age maybe where some people were thinking about taking it easy or, you know, heading head out to the golf course or something, you've taken on this uh, new challenge and I, I would assume that it's you know a big job and and a lot to it so is it something that you thought about for a while or you know I know you've always been interested in in politics um, well I can you know being interested in politics is something that you know goes back a long way for me uh, I think it was the Kennedy election 1960 you know listening to the radio uh, almost the entire evening into the early morning uh, Everyone was excited about Kennedy and, and him being elected. So it kind of got me interested in politics. It kind of fueled it. My father always loved politics. He always felt it was very important for us to be involved, very important for us to vote, very important for us to understand the issues of the day. And I think he instilled that in myself, my brother. Uh, and from that day forward, you know, from being like a nine-year-old kid <laughs> watching the TV and uh, the, the inauguration and everything, and so that's what happened. I got interested in politics. I always felt it was very important, important for all of us to vote, important for all of us to be involved. And I think if you're going to live in a, in a society, in a wonderful country like we have, the greatest country in the world, for it, for it to maintain its level, for it to maintain the type of country that we have, we've got to be involved. We've got to, it's important that we're involved. It's important that we understand uh, the issues of the day. It's important that we support candidates that we think will move us forward as a nation. And, you know, I tell my friends every morning, I have two sayings. When we go out to exercise in the morning, I tell my buddies, I say, it's a beautiful day in Pennsylvania because it always is in my mind. <laughs> and I say, you got to love this country. And, and, and sometime they come back with me and they'll say things like, well, even if, you don't like the president, you still got to like the country. And I said, well, I like the president. Of course, some of those guys don't. They're not, they don't support some of the policies of, uh, of uh, our president. But having said that, I think we all agree, no matter what your political view is, you need to be involved. And you need to be out there in, in, uh, because it's important. You're giving, in my mind too, I'm giving back to a, a county that's been great to me. I'm giving back to a state that's been great to me and give back to a nation that has provided all of us with wonderful opportunities that, that we wouldn't have had uh, perhaps if our grandparents had gone in another direction, another boat, or had not been fortunate enough to uh, come to the United States. And I, I'm reminded of your most recent article that you wrote about uh, about immigration and I thought to myself it, it, it kind of hit home mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, I think sometime when when I see what's going on throughout the world I think boy how lucky can I be to be an American and how unlucky some people might be to be living in a society where they don't have opportunities where they don't have freedoms where they can't speak their mind and can't you know fulfill not only their dreams, but even even any dream at all, even any uh, idea of success, because of, of conflict, of war, of uh, prejudice. And I think, boy, we don't know how lucky we are, how fortunate we are to be Americans. And so I want to I want to see this country get. No, I love it now, and I want to see it get better. Mm -hmm. Had you ever thought about yourself running for an office in the past? You know, I have. I've, I've really many times considered it, but, you know, uh, I was fortunate enough to have a, a very good law practice. Uh, it, it, it's uh, fulfilling for me professionally, and it's, uh, I didn't want to give that up. Mm -hmm. I feel like I, I can do a lot of good as a lawyer. Uh, 
I think you know there's a lot of lawyer bashing goes on. It's, that's a, a common <laughs> joke. But truth be known, uh, it's a it's a wonderful profession, and the people that practice the profession, for the most part, do a lot of good. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know we can joke about it, we can kid about it, but I think everyone who's been involved with lawyers and have ha and has had the need for attorneys understand the role that they play in society and the importance that important things that they can do. Uh, so I didn't want to wouldn't be wouldn't be wouldn't be quite the same if you didn't have attorneys. Yeah. Really, yeah. Think things would really be a, well, a some lot people worse. Some people disagree with us, <laughs> but 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 politics, uh, public service is I think. Uh, part of being a, a good citizen, and uh, you can pick a lot of different types of public service. I think they're all important. I'm not suggesting that being involved in politics is the only way to go. Being involved in politics to the extent that you're aware of the issues and that you vote, that to me is essential. That's something every American needs to be involved. And when you, you know, at 18, people should register to vote. And they should exercise the franchise, as we like to say. Mm -hmm. Well, now you are um, succeeding uh, to the uh, legendary uh, Fred Lebder. Um, Fred, uh, still uh, amazing, uh, still going strong at uh, 90, 91, I believe it is, something like something that. Like uh, that. Uh, been in politics, you know, I believe 45 years, something like that, is the uh, chairman of, of, of the party. So how do you feel about... Um, replacing him or more more uh, rightly succeeding him well I mean first of all you don't replace the uh, Fred Lebber is an iconic figure in Fayette County politics and I suggest he's probably iconic throughout the state mm. when it comes to democratic right. politics you don't replace Fred Lebber um, uh, it can't I can't do that I can come in I can serve as the chairman of the Democratic Party and do things that I think I can accomplish to even consider that I would have a, an administration that could, could be compared to his, I, I don't even think about that. I think Mr. Lebner's done a wonderful job. I've said this before, uh, he's the consummate politician. He has uh, a certain acumen that few possess, and, and I give him credit. I often said that I would never seek to be Democratic chairman while Mr. Lebner was the Democratic chairman or Mr. Lebner it wanted to be Democratic chairman. When he decided that he would not, uh, he would retire from the position, that's when I said I would be interested in, in, in serving. So I don't see myself replacing him. I'd like to think I can build upon what's going on. We're faced with a, no, a number of different issues today than, than perhaps Mr. Lebder faced, and we need to address those issues. Mm -hmm. Well, things are probably a little more challenging maybe than, than what uh, uh, Fred had, uh, you know, for years, the uh, Democratic Party ruled uh, Fayette County with no real, not a whole lot of opposition from, from the Republican Party. I think one of the uh, issues was labor, the UMW was big, and they supported the, the Democratic Party pretty much uh, 100%. And really, we've started to see where the UMW definitely, there's just not as many coal miners as as there used to be, and so that's that that influence has kind of gone by the wayside. And you did back uh, four years ago when uh, Governor Corbett ran, he he did win win uh, Fayette County, and also uh, uh, Barack Obama, the uh, president, lost twice here in, in Fayette County. So there does seem to be pe people who are seeming at least willing to be maybe more independent, maybe than than what they used to be. How do you view that? Um, you know, where maybe before it was kind of taken for granted, now you can't really take it, take anything for granted. Well, you know, I think, I suspect many people have taken it, did take it for granted that if you were a Democrat and you won the primary, you won the general election. Uh, you know, we've, we have seen Fayette County voters tend to, at least on a national scale and, and to a lesser extent statewide, vote for Republican candidates. I don't have uh, a particular reason that I can point to to say, well, this is why that happened, this is, this is why it did not happen. Uh, in terms of Corbett, you know, I'm still a little shocked that he was successful four years ago. 
uh, when you look at the policies that he, uh, that he was proposing, the positions that he had taken, they seem to me to be foreign to a lot of the needs and concerns of the average Fayette County resident. That's how I saw it. Uh, but yet, the, the, the voter voted for him. Of course, we, we have to keep in mind, uh, we, we, keep, we have a the shrinking percentage of people voting. Uh, less people voting means perhaps a small minority of voters has a greater influence because you have a large percentage of eligible voters are not registered. Those that are registered are, are voting about one in four, maybe one in three. For last election, 24% of the registered voters, I understand, voted. I could be off on that, but I think that's a yeah, fairly Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, fairly that's pretty accurate, accurate right, right. So, so naturally, a, a smaller percentage has a larger voice because these other people never exercise, they never voiced right. their opinion by voting. Uh, you know, I, I think that, yes, there are challenges. I think there are more people who are prepared to vote Republican if they feel that this candidate is the better candidate. I get, I get concerned about people voting on issues that don't, in my mind, influence or those issues really have no impact on their lives. And the candidate they vote for really can't affect those issues. For example, who the governor is is not going to weigh in much on whether you, you ha a woman has a right to choose or not. Who the governor is is really going to have a, a great deal of influence on how many guns one might possess on, and the interpretation of the Second Amendment. Those, those are more know, federal. Like, those are federal, federal issues. issues. And, 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 on, and honestly, it, it seems to me that those issues sometimes cause people to lean one way or the other in their voting. In my mind, I want to know what the governor stands for. Will he fund more classes of Pennsylvania State Troopers? Will he fund public education? Thomas Jefferson said two centuries or so ago that that's the key to a free society, educating the masses, public education is what will raise our country up. And he was right. We were the first nation to have true public education. And I want to know whether the governor supports public education, whether he is going to make sure that the districts that are, are poor and don't have a large property tax base are still going to have enough funds to educate their kids. Because it's all about opportunities. It's all about giving every American an opportunity to succeed. Whether they succeed or not is up to them. It's about giving them the opportunities that public education does that. So, in my mind, uh, that's what I want to know. I, I, I want to know whether the governor is going to cut the legislature. We have the largest, most expensive legislature in the United States. And yet, instead of when we build new roads in western Pennsylvania, the poorest area, we've got to pay tolls. Big our, our, high tolls. High tolls. Our, our kids don't get the funding for their schools that the children in other parts of the state may get. That's what I want to talk about. That's what me means something to, to the average Fayette County. Are we, going to, are we going to have roads? Are we going to improve the bridges? Are we going to take funds? Are we going to cut some of these budgets? Why should all of the, why should all of the, the budget go toward government for government's sake? How about let's cut some of that? Let's, let's divert some of that money to public education. Let's make sure we have enough state troopers. We went, we had that uh, dry spell, how many years we went without a class. And we still don't have enough state troopers to meet the requirements of the state. We still don't have enough. That's what I, I think we need to be talking about. That's what I think people need, that's why people need to vote. So they can say, I want more funding to train state troopers. I want more funding for public education. I don't want a lot of money spent on, on a, a legislature that is too large for the size of our population in the state. That's what people need to be voting for, and that's what I think the Democratic Party seeks. That's what we stand, that's what we talk about. Okay, we're going to take a break right now. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. It is so easy to give back. I don't have a lot of money to help people, but I do have something. I have time. Get up and do something. Just imagine 
how strong a society we could be. Every one of us has a role to play in making our communities and our country stronger. Discover yours. Help us continue to make a difference in the life of our nation. Go to serve.gov and find the opportunity that works for you. And this message is brought to you by the Corporation for National and Community Service. Hello, welcome back to this edition of Editor's Notebook. My name is Mark O'Keefe. I'm the editorial page editor for the Herald Standard. With us today is Jim Davis. Jim is the newly elected chairman of the uh, uh, Fayette County Democratic Party. I want to once again thank Jim for coming on our show today. And uh, the first part, uh, we're talking about how you got involved in, in uh in politics and why you decided to uh, seek the uh, chairmanship. So let's talk now about and, uh, what, what are some of your plans. And I know we were talking about the, uh, the voter turnout and uh, how, how low it is. And really one of the things that you really have now is you have a very small number of people that are actually able to, to control the, the county's uh, destiny. The, you know, uh, I know back before, like years ago, for county commissioner races and any kind of countywide race, it took quite a number of uh, votes to win an election. Now, it's and it's getting less and less. I think before, I remember one time, it was probably about 25 years ago, it, it would be like maybe 25,000 votes. Now it's like 10,000 votes, and that number is dwindling. So... You know, it, it is a problem with um, with a voter um, turnout. Like you said, 24 um, percent. So, what do you what do you think are some of the ways maybe that that we could try and or you want to try and encourage more people to, to get involved? And, and what do you think is the problem with with the apathy? Well, I think apathy comes from people being very comfortable. The other, and the other part of apathy, the other aspect of it is I think many people feel that their vote doesn't mean anything. I'm one vote, what's it mean? And, and they don't look at it collectively. Uh, that is to say, well, if enough people thinking like me don't vote because they don't think it matters, then pretty soon we're going to have people in public office who are going to, have, are going to adhere to policies that don't help me, that I disapprove of, that I don't think are good for the nation. But then it's too late because too many people who felt a certain way just said, ah, I don't mean anything, doesn't matter. And plus, I have a good life. I don't know how you start to turn that around, but I think the first step is that people have to recognize mm -hmm. that we live in a great country, in a great nation, in a great place. Mm -hmm. And in order to preserve what we have, we've got to be participating in the government because it is a government by the people. And we have to remember that. And then what do you do? That's how you, I think that's how you start the discussion. You talk about it. You try to get young people to think about it and talk about it and, you, and try to get them to understand that for us as a nation to maintain our status of freedoms, we need to be engaged. The second thing we have to do is we have to do something to convince our elected officials, particularly in the, in the legislature in Harrisburg and in Washington that the people are tired of polarization. They are tired of the inability of a Democrat and a Republican to sit down together and agree on legislation. They're tired of the inability of, of, of a Democrat and Republican to have an exchange and a give and take to get something done. We don't like it. The American people don't like it. And as a result, many Americans are disengaged and in the long run, not only does that political person, that legislator or congressman, hurt his or herself, they hurt the nation. It, we all suffer. So we need to somehow do that. Now, how does that happen? It happens if the people, by voting, by participating, by getting engaged, send that message. Well, one of the problems, I think, I, I mean, I think you can blame apathy or whatever, but I do think that. Uh, Pennsylvania is way behind a lot of other states in terms of uh, voting. Um, it, they make it so hard to, to, to vote. And other states are trying different things, such as same-day registration. Now, for, for somebody, if you're not 
registered. And maybe you're thinking, ah, I'm not really all that interested in that governor's race or something. Well, if something happens in maybe a week or two and somebody says something or whatever and you get all interested, but a registration's a month out. And there's no, I mean, we'll, we'll put something in the paper about it or whatever, but most people, they don't even, they don't know that, you know, they don't, they don't realize that. And um, you have um, other, you know, other states are, are trying different things, trying to make, trying to allow people longer times to vote. Uh, they're trying to uh, allow people to vote from home, trying to really encourage people. I, I don't know if it's, um, you know, just the, the times that we live in or, or whatever, but, um, but I do think that there are things that, that other states are doing that we should at least look at. Well, I think, first of all, we need to accept premise that the apathy, lack of voter registration, eligible voter registration, and voter apathy is a far greater threat to the nation than any type of voter fraud, at least what we have seen. We need to, we need to come to that understanding as a people. Our government needs to come to that understanding as, a, as the legislature, and we need to start addressing the issue of making it convenient to vote. We have other states that you can vote two, three weeks out prior to the uh, election day. We, we, have, we, we have the polls open at different times, different days of the week, not just on a Tuesday. Right. We have other, my feeling is this, we should be experimenting and trying as many different possible methods of getting people to vote until we see that there is a problem, and then we address it. But, if, for example, everyone, you hear people talk now, well, there's voter fraud. Well, I, I, I want to see a case. Right. I want to see where, where we have this rampant fraud in, in voting. We, I haven't seen it. I've never seen it. Never. But yet, someone will use that problem to say, well, we can't have same-day registration, or we must produce a valid identification. I mean, where we live, just for, hypothetically, everybody knows us. Right. If I walk into the polls to vote, the ladies that work in the polls, they all know me. <laughs> Hi, Jim. I'm there every election. And, and for the most part, that's the way it is. Now, I realize if, if someone were to come in and they weren't sure who he was, maybe in that instance we can ask for some type of ID. But the whole idea of trying to fix a problem that doesn't exist, it's a waste of time. We need to, to expand the voting by having voting three or four weeks in advance. We need to look into other methods. We should have re registration even up to the date of the election provided that we put in the proper safeguards that other states have done to make sure it's, it's done properly. Why? Why can't we do that? We need, if, until we start encouraging people by taking these steps into the modern era that other state, st states are taking, we're going to continue to have problems in Pennsylvania and we're going to continue to decline. Yeah. Now, as a, the Democratic Party, I can tell you this. What I want to do is I want to encourage the Democratic Committee people to get people to register to vote. I want to encourage the Democratic people, the committee people, to contact people at or about election time to get them out there to vote, to mobilize people, to remind them, to do everything we can as a party to get them to the polls, whatever we can do, whatever resources we have, we can devote to that. That's what we want to do. Well, it seems like this is something that um because you can't, you can't just start it on election day. This is something that has to be um, a, a process, and it takes time. And you know, you have to kind of think ahead or work ahead on on, on this whole thing. And that's you know, one of the problems I think is that sometimes people probably they might get excited, but by the time they do, that if they're not registered, well, you, you're not going to be able to vote. Well, you know? and, and that's so true. And one thing we're doing now, and what we want to do as a party is we want to try to get people registered as early as possible in the mm -hmm. process. And we want them to be registered so that we can say to them, look, when it comes election day, and now you're getting a little passionate about something, you'll be able to, you'll be able to vote. Right. If you wait till the week before, and then you're, 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 you're giving up your voice, you're tossing it away. We don't want you to do that. So we're going to do everything we can, and we're working as we try to move into this new era of the busy Americans, the busy Fayette Counties, we're trying to convince them how important this is to take that little bit of time out of their day. To me, there should not be long lines at the polls. It seems awfully 
inexpensive to me to that we can uh, accommodate more voters, maybe extra voting machines. These are the types of things we need to be thinking about and changing, not next year or two years, but now. Yeah, no, in Fayette County, in some places there are long, long lines, in other places they're they're probably too small. In other, some are some are too too big, and but also too, some of these places are you know uh, people would have no idea where where to even go to vote because they're kind of out of the way or whatever. Well, I think we have an obligation, uh, not only as as the political parties, both political parties for that matter, uh, major political parties have an obligation to continually publicize where you vote, how you register, why you should register, and things of that nature. It should be, it should be a constant process. Also, the government itself should do that. We should, our election bureau should, and I, I suspect they are, uh, should uh, be promoting that, where the voting polls are going to be, how you might want to get there. So that's, that's what we have to do. So it, it's, it's in the forefront of the process. Well, uh, we are got a few more minutes here, but uh, we do want to talk about uh, the big race coming up, and you did mention about uh, uh, Governor Tom Corbett, who did win Fayette County four years ago. Now, he is behind in the polls. Uh, Tom Wolf, the Democratic candidate, is leading him by, by wide margin. Do um, you think that, uh, how, do, how do you view this, and uh, are you concerned about Corbett winning Fayette County again? Well, yes, I am concerned, uh, to put it simply. Uh, I think that Tom Wolf offers a lot to Fayette County in terms of his policies. I do. Uh, Tom Wolf has come out publicly and, and said that he is going to restore funding, the funding that we've lost to public education. That's critical to our county. It's critical to a poor county like ours that we educate the, the people. And Wolf wants to do that. He said that publicly. Uh, I think that, to me, has got to be enough reason. But in addition to that, I think we, he has taken the position that we need to look very carefully at the natural gas industry in terms of revenue, in terms of some type of taxation of the natural gas industry. We in Fayette County have suffered through a coal industry uh, 50, 60, 70 years ago that left slag piles and coke and debris and pollution just ravaged the county in all western Pennsylvania, and they were never held accountable. I think we cannot go through that again. I think the natural gas industry needs to be accountable, and, and, and I suspect they will be. It's not so much that they're resisting it, but they're only going to do what the law requires them to do. And I think a guy like Tom Wolf, uh, if he were governor, and if the legislature would follow his recommendations, we could address those issues in advance so that we have the resources to uh, utilize the funds so that we could prevent and or uh, rem remediate pollution. And also, some of those funds could be used for some other needs in the state because they're using our resources, they're using our roads, you know, and we welcome them. We don't want to do anything to push them away. I don't mean it that way at all, but I do think we want them to be accountable. And I don't suspect, I, I believe they will be willing to be accountable as well. I think Pennsylvania is the only state without an e extraction uh, tax. Uh, I mean, the other states have extraction taxes, and everyone, no one has a problem with that. No, I mean, we want to be, I think we want to be on par with the other states. I don't think we want to do something that would be uh, more aggressive or, or uh, more burdensome, but we want to be on par with it. Mm -hmm. That's how I see it, as, as it comes to the natural gas industry. As, as far as Wolf's concerned, I think he... Uh, he does offer a clear choice for governor, and uh, I think he's a choice that, as I said a few moments ago, is very favorable to the average Fayette County. So does that mean he'll win, win the uh, election in November? Well, we're going to do our best. And, and he was here in, in the primary. Any chance you think he'll be here uh, before the, the election? We have been, I, I personally have, and other members of the Democratic Committee. We've been in contact with uh, with his campaign staff, his campaign manager, and we're encouraged that he'll visit. We're hoping to get him here. We're hoping to get him here for the Fayette County Democratic Banquet. That we think it would be good for him and good for us. 
So we're going to do everything we can to get him here. And I think, uh, I think we will. Mm -hmm. I do. I think he'll come. I think he'll visit Fayette County. Hopefully you'll have a chance to maybe interview him. I think that would be good to you – can, you can ask him some of those tough questions. Yeah. Yeah, we we uh, we we certainly would uh, would like that. Um, but I, I did think it was interesting that at least he he was here in the uh, in the primary. I know they were trying to, to kind of uh, kind of work that out. And uh, I'll tell you one thing: uh, as far as I know, I don't believe Governor Corbett has been to uh, Fayette County. So we'll see. Maybe if he'll if he'll be here in the uh, in the coming months before the election. Well, that's pretty much going to wrap up our show today. I want to thank Jim Davis, uh, the chairman of the uh, new chairman of the Fayette County Democratic Party. Uh, good luck in, in your endeavors there. I'm still trying to figure out how you're going to fit all this in with, uh, with everything else that, that you've got on your plate there. Well, uh, first of all, I want to thank you for having me. It's been my pleasure. It's always nice to talk to you. Uh, I get to read your articles, but now we get to talk. We have a little, I get to give you some of my opinions. <laughs> And, uh, you know, as far as being the, uh, the chairman, I'm a lawyer first, and I, I suspect I'll always be. But, you know, to me, it's, I'm giving something back. I'm doing something that I think is important. And uh, I just want more people to join me. That's what I want. And, uh, and I'll, I'll do my best. And hopefully we'll get a chance to talk again, and then you can critique some of the things <laughs> that I've done or not done. Okay. Look so, forward to doing that. Thank you. Thank, thanks again for being on the show. And I want to thank you for watching. My name's Mark O'Keefe. I'm the editorial page editor for the Herald Standard, and we'll see you later.